Okay, the diagram below pertains to questions 10 through 13. So I can see I have this like a, a space probe and there are two rockets attached and it's rotating about its center, which is the axis of rotation. So number 10, a cylindrical space probe of mass 455 kilograms and a diameter of 15.5 meters has two rockets attached. Each rocket generates a thrust of 3.78 E3 newtons and the probe has a moment of inertia of 1.374 kilogram meter squared per second. Uh, ooh, this should just be kilogram meter squared. Find the tangential acceleration. So um, we need to, you're going to need to know that, okay, tangential means that places that these vectors that are tangent to the to the rotation. So it has a tangential acceleration which is found using this equation um, A equals alpha times R. We'll go more into tangents in topic 6, next topic. So let's determine what the angular acceleration is and I can relate this to the fact that these rockets are exerting a force on the object so if the object is experiencing a force like this and a force like this, it's causing rotation. It's causing it to rotate um, like so. So we have two rockets both generating thrust in opposite directions. This makes the object rotate. It spins. So the total force is two times. 3.78 E3 newtons. So you can imagine this thing spins. If both of the rockets were pointing in the same direction, the thing would just translate. In this case, because they're opposites, it rotates. So the total force is applied. These forces are applied at a distance of half of this 15.5 meters each. So 15.5 over 2. is 7.75 meters and that's the distance the force is applied to the moment arm notice it is these forces are applied at 90 degree angles from the axis of rotation so indeed um, this is maximum torque so torque equals the forces 2 times 3.78 e3 so that's 7.56 e3 newtons times the distance, these are from the axis of rotation, 7.75 meters. So I'll do this in my calculator, times 7.75 meters, and I get a torque of 5.86 E4 Newton meters. And just like we've been doing many problems now, torque also equals I times alpha. We know the moment of inertia already. We will solve for alpha now. So the torque is 5.86 E4. Set that equal to the moment of inertia, 1.37 E4 times alpha. Okay, so I'll divide by 1.374. So alpha, the angular acceleration, equals 4.26 rad per second squared. And if I want the linear acceleration, I just need to multiply this by the moment arm, 7.75 meters. When I do this, my rads will just fall out because I'm going now from an angle unit to a linear unit. So 4.26 times... 7.75, the ax, the, the moment arm, and I get a linear acceleration of 33.0 meters per second. And this acceleration happens just along. If I were to take snapshots of the change in velocity over time, just acting along any point on the rotating probe, it would be always tangent to this curve, this rotating curve, a rotating probe. Now we want the linear acceleration. 
So this is a case where the linear acceleration is not the same as the tangential acceleration. So I'll, I'll note that this is the tangential by a tan. Does this object translate linearly at all? No. So the linear acceleration, a linear, is zero meters per second squared. It's not translating. So this is different from a situation where we had an object rolling down a hill and the uh, tangential acceleration is the linear acceleration. In this case, it, there's, this thing is floating out in space. These two forces can only cause a rotation, not a translation. Okay, number 12. If the forces act for 2.59 seconds, find the angular speed of the probe. So I know the angular acceleration already. It's 4.26 rads per second squared. The time this takes is 2.59 seconds. I'm going to assume that this thing starts from rest, so omega initial is zero rads per second. And we're looking for the final, omega final. That's unknown, so I go to the data booklet, omega final equals omega initial plus alpha times time. Omega final then is acceleration, angular acceleration, 4.26 rads per second squared times 2.59 seconds. 4.26 times 2.59, and I get a value of 11 rads per second. Cool. And finally, the probe approaches a satellite traveling at negligible linear speed. The satellite is not rotating until it links with the probe. Find the angular speed of the system after they connect. The moment of inertia of the smaller satellite is 2.75 E3 kilogram meter squared. I don't know why these per seconds keep coming up. Sorry. Uh, okay. So we are going to say that the change in angular momentum of the system, because we're dealing with rotation, is zero. So that means the linear, sorry, the angular uh, momentum after the collision equals the angular momentum before the collision. Before the collision, this system had an angular momentum of zero, because I guess I'm looking at it before, find the angular speed. The satellite is not rotating until it links with the probe. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. I hit this. Did not mean to. I'm going to use this after the 2.59 seconds. I'm going to have to assume that after this 2.59 seconds, when it has this angular speed is when the satellite connects. It's the only thing that can make sense. Or else I just have 0 equals 0, and it's no good. Okay, so uh, before I'm going to use this, my final angular speed will be the initial angular speed. So this is just of the probe itself, which had an ang a moment of inertia. I times omega initial. This had a moment of inertia of 1.37. E4 times omega, 11 rads per second. And I'm going to set that equal to their final moment of inertia, 2.75 E3, plus, again, 1.37 E4 times omega final. So omega final equals 1.37 E4. That's the probe's angular, sorry, the probe's moment of inertia times this angular velocity after the 2.59 seconds, so 11, divided by their final moment of inertia, the 2.75 E3 plus 1.37 E4. So I get a final angular uh, speed. Let me see, I'm calculating 1.37 E4 times 11 divided by 2.75 E3 plus 1.37 E4. 
and I get a final angular speed of, or angular velocity of 9.16 rads per second. And this is conservation of angular momentum. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. One more, and we are done with the worksheet.